In this video, we're going to complete example two. We're going to sketch the following functions, this time using the x and y intercept method. We're also going to find the point of intersection for the two lines by solving them simultaneously. Now to find the x and y intercept, we need to look at what happens when x is zero and when y is zero. Sometimes it helps if we use kind of like a mini table of values where our top row is X and our bottom row is Y. So as I stated earlier, we're looking at what happens when X is zero and when Y is zero. So if X equals zero, we get two times zero plus Y minus four equals zero. All we've done is taken this equation and substituted zero in place of X. Now, whenever you multiply something by zero, it ends up canceling out. So we're left with y minus four equals zero. Now, all we need to do is add four to both sides. This will cancel the minus four and give us y equals four. So when x equals zero, y equals four, we can write that on our mini table of values. When x is zero and y is four, we get the point zero comma four. This is our y-intercept. You might notice that to find the y-intercept, we make x equals zero. So the y-intercept occurs when x equals zero. Where do you think the x-intercept occurs? Well, where y equals zero. So let's look at what happens when y equals zero this time. We're going to get 2x plus zero minus four equals zero. All I've done is taken this equation and substituted zero in place of y. Zeros always cancel out, so we get 2x minus four equals zero. Now we need to add four to both sides. We're trying to isolate x which gives us 2x equals 4, and then we divide both terms by 2, like so, giving us x equals 2. So when y is 0, x equals 2. We'll write that on our table of values. x equals 2, and y equals 0. This gives us the point 2, 0. Now that we have two points, we can simply draw a line that passes through them. Now, just in case you haven't worked out why we call it the X and Y intercept method, it's because we find the Y intercept and the X intercept, which gives us two points, and then we can draw our graph. All right, let's look at our second equation now. We're gonna need a blank slate for this one. So we're looking at what happens if x equals zero and then what happens if y equals zero. If I was to write what this looks like on our mini table of values, we're looking at what happens when x is zero and what happens when y is zero. So we need to substitute x being zero into this equation. We're gonna get y equals three over four times zero. Now, 3 over 4 times 0 is 0, so we're going to get y equals 0, meaning when x is 0, y will also equal 0. Now, this point actually lies on the origin, 0, 0. Now, some of you might have already figured out what's going to happen when we make y equals 0, but I'll just go through the process anyway. We're going to have 0 equals 3 over 4x. I've just substituted zero in place of y. I can then multiply both terms by four, canceling my four. Zero times four is zero, so I get zero equals three x. And then when I divide by three, what do I get? Well, zero divide three is zero, so I'm gonna get x equals zero. So funnily enough, when x equals zero, y equals zero, and when y equals zero, x equals zero, which gives us the same point. Now, this is not gonna work for us because we need two points to draw a line. 
So what do we do in this situation? Well, we're going to have to break the rules a little bit because we can't really use the X and Y intercept method here. So what am I going to do? Well, looking at my mini table of values, these two columns are useless because they're the same. So I'm going to rub out the second one. And I'm going to look at what happens when X is 4. Now, why did I pick 4? Well, you'll soon understand when we figure out Y. So we'll take this equation, Y equals 3 over 4X. And this time we're going to multiply it by 4 because we're substituting 4 in place of X. Now you might notice I'm dividing by 4 and then timesing by 4, and these will actually cancel each other out, leaving me with y being equal to 3. So the reason I picked 4 for my x value is because I knew it would cancel that denominator of 4 and give me a nice whole number for y. I now have a second point where x is 4 and y is 3. This will be the point 4, 3. I now have two points, which is all I need to sketch my line. All right, we're now moving on to question B. We are asked to find the point of intersection for the two lines by solving them simultaneously. Some people like to find the point of intersection by looking at where the two lines intersect. They seem to intersect at the point where x is 1.5 and where y is 1. So we'll write that down. The point of intersection is 1.5, 1. Now, when you do this by looking at a graph, it's really only an approximation. So it's approximately 1.5, 1. If we want an exact solution, we need to solve them simultaneously. So let's start with a blank slate and we'll just write down our estimation. We estimate it to be 1.5, 1. So how are we going to solve these equations simultaneously? Well, I'll start by writing the first equation down. 2x plus y minus 4 equals 0. When we look at the second equation, we can see that y equals 3 quarters x. Now, we can substitute 3 quarters x in place of y here. This will give us 2x plus 3 quarters x minus 4 equals 0. All right, let's now solve this equation. Now, I really hate fractions, so the first thing I want to do is get rid of the denominator of 4 here. I'm going to do that by multiplying by 4, and I need to do that to every single term. This will get rid of my fraction. 2x times 4 is 8x. I get 8x here. Because I've cancelled the 4, I'm left with 3x, so 8x plus 3x minus 16, because 4 times 4 is 16, and 0 times 4 is 0, so this still equals 0. 8x plus 3x is 11x, so I get 11x minus 16 equals 0, and now I'm going to add 16 to both sides of the equation. This will cancel the minus 16, leaving me with 11x equals 16. And finally, I'm going to divide both terms by 11 to isolate x, giving me x equals 16 over 11. Now, markers prefer you to leave it as a fraction. This is a very nice solution here. If we wanted to convert this to a decimal, we could. We could bring up a calculator, 16 divide 11 gives us 1.45 continuous. So we can write it down as a decimal, and I will in this instance, but markers would prefer you to leave it as a fraction. Okay, so when x equals 16 over 11, what does y equal? Well, in order to find y, you can pick either of the two equations. It really doesn't matter. Out of the two, I think the second equation would be the better pick. So I'm going to take y equals 3 quarters x, and I'm going to substitute 16 over 11 in place of x. This will give me y equals 3 over 4 times 16 over 11. 
Now to save myself some time, I'm going to use the calculator because I can. And the good thing about the calculator is it will simplify the fractions. So we have 3 over 4, 3 ABC 4, times 16 over 11, 16 ABC 11, and we get 1 and 1 eleventh. Now when you reach this advanced level of mathematics, we prefer improper fractions as a solution. We'll find that by going second function ABC, and we get the solution 12 over 11. So 12 over 11. Now once again, markers prefer answers given as a fraction, but we'll find the decimal anyway. 12 over 11, 12 divide 11, gives us the decimal 1.0909 and so on. So we get 1.09 continuous. Now looking at our estimation, we estimated x to be 1.5, which it was very close to, and also y to be 1, and that's very close to what we got. But we can see that our estimation was just an estimation. It wasn't 100% correct. So we'll finish off question B by stating that our point of intersection is the point 16 over 11 for x and 12 over 11 for y. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.